Welcome, my name is Don Young, and today we're going to begin carving a vintage style songbird decoy. There will be three parts, three videos in this series, two for carving and one for painting. So let's get started. Well, songbird decoys, who knew there was such a thing? It's not like we're out shooting songbirds, are we? Well, in fact, songbird decoys have been used in scientific studies uh, to attract the, um, the birds uh, for study purposes. So uh, they are, are being used and uh, we're going to be building an antique version. So this is our project. It's a golden winged warbler and they do come into the southeast corner of Manitoba. And like all warblers, they're often very hard to see. But uh, nevertheless, we're going to carve and paint this little guy in an antique uh, decoy style. So one of the considerations that you want to make when choosing a subject is, uh, what does this bird look like? How complex is it going to be to paint? So I like to choose a bird that is uh, made up of fairly simple patterns or simple colors you know, three or four main colors, and that helps a whole lot. So uh, here you have a uh, chickadee, a white-breasted nuthatch, a Kirtland's warbler, and a black and white warbler. Those should all be pretty good subjects. And that's why I, I chose a golden-winged warbler, which is basically gray, white, and yellow. So I often can't find patterns for the types of birds I would like to carve, so I have to make my own. One of the resources I use is the Sibley Bird Guide. In there you'll find uh, beautiful uh, profile drawings of all sorts of birds and um, they are really great to uh, blow up on your photocopier to the correct size. You'll do a little math and see what percent you have to increase their size and um, get your, uh, your profile view to the correct length. So the golden winged warbler is about four and three quarter inches. So that's what you see on the right hand side. I've got a, a side view and um, the top view of your pattern, you'll have to adapt that from maybe some other bird patterns that you have and kind of, you know, shorten the tail or lengthen the wings or um, change the bill shape a little bit to, to uh, match the, the new uh, pattern that you're making. So now that I have my pattern, you'll see I have it laid out on a piece of basswood and I will cut that on, on the bandsaw as normal. And uh, on the right hand side, you will see what I do next with my pattern that I've uh, made out of uh, some uh, thin mylar or uh, could be a lid from a lettuce box, something like that, that, that has a bit of stiffness to it. And I'll use um, probes from my high school dissecting kit to poke some holes along the line of the wing just to uh, establish some positions of some of the parts. So here you'll see some of the lines that have been transferred from my pattern onto my, my carving blanks. And uh, it's important to get the, you know, the length of the wings there, the, get everything uh, uh, correct so that you have your guidelines as you start carving. So here I go, I've got my knife uh, going and I'm starting to do a little rounding off. Um, be careful on the left hand side there that you don't chop away uh, those long primary feathers, the, the longest wing feathers. So just be careful when, you, uh, when you're approaching those. Um, it is a good idea to, as you can see on the right hand side, is to do some stop cuts straight down around those wing tips. You'll want a little bump so that the wing tips stand up above the tail. And then I've taken some of the top of the tail away a little bit so those um, primaries, feathers, those wingtips are raised up. In our next photographs here, you'll see that uh, I am working a little bit on the, the wingtips, the primary feathers. Those primary feathers, when they lay along the back of a bird, um, they don't sit in a, in a, in a real rounded shape. They're, they're rather flat, they're very stiff feathers, so they don't really uh, cup themselves as they're sitting on top there. So um, you're going to want to make a bit of a flat surface uh, uh, starting right about where, where my knife is there. On the right hand photo you'll see I've uh, 
started uh, carving down around the edges of the, the head following those lines from my pattern. Uh, so I'm starting to establish the width of the, of the bird's head and I've done a little, other little bits of rounding off as you can see. So now I'm uh, doing a little checking. Um, get your pattern, make sure your pattern is close at hand so that you can look at it from time to time and make sure you haven't made some terrible mistakes because now would be a good time to start over rather than uh, when you're much further along. So um, look at your your profile. Your bandsaw has probably cut it out a little larger than your than your pattern. So you might want to start uh, adjusting the uh, the profile shape of your bird to match your pattern. And here I've started working a little bit uh, uh, around uh, the front of his head there towards the bill. So as you can see in, uh, in well, both both pictures here, there's uh, quite a flat area that uh, goes along the side of the head that that approaches right to the the um, end of the of where the bill meets the head. Uh, there isn't a big bump there that changes from the, the head to the to the bill it's it's rather a, a flat smooth surface so make sure you do that and next we'll uh, do some work on the bill so the bill on a songbird when you look straight on is uh, a bit of a pentagon shape so it meets at the top surface on my center line there that you can see uh, that's the the high point so there's two slopes that go down uh, each side of that um, of the center point um, in a bit of a V and then there's uh, on each side there's another uh, sh uh, smaller surface and then the underneath of the bill makes up for the fifth type of uh, uh, fifth surface so you're getting a, a sort of a pentagon there and the right hand uh, diagram you'll see the the blue surface or the surface that I've got painted blue there that's the, the sort of the top uh, slope of the pentagon on, on this side just a couple more views uh, showing how I've narrowed the bill a little bit. Uh, the bandsaw cuts it up pretty wide, so you want to make a nice, delicate little uh, uh, warbler bill. Warblers uh, feed on insects. They don't have a great big, thick bill. They have a rather delicate one uh, for poking into little crevices and, and grabbing uh, little worms and little insects. Another view of the, um, the front face on of the uh, of the warbler with his his beak and another yet another one from above so you just need to sneak up on those delicate things just keep working away a little bit uh, uh, you know pinch the head in a little bit so you have a little crown going there and uh, it just gets uh, more bird like uh, look at your references see what a bird looks like so here I've uh, started working on the wing. I want the wings to stand out from the body a little bit uh, to help give the bird some uh, character. So I've uh, followed all along the underneath edge of, that I drew off of my pattern with a, with a quarter inch gouge. So that's quite a deep uh, uh, path or pathway that I made. I, I think you would agree, um, but uh, you're going to need that. So this, this, uh, gouge goes all along here as you can see and right up over the tail and matches up with that um, with the ends of your wing tips there so uh, be careful there with your pushing with your gouge that uh, you don't want to see bandages in the next slide <laughs> 